Which button's working? Forward, back, explosion. Good thing I have an electrical engineering degree, so I know how to figure this out. <laughs> so, hey guys, thank you for having me. Uh, I am really delighted and honored to be here. Imran Anwar is my name. My day job is with Microsoft, but I am not representing Microsoft. If something leads to the stock price going up, I will take credit. If I say something that doesn't, then it's all my own thinking or lack thereof. Um, it's always great to talk to people who are in the industry because you guys live, and gals, got to be inclusive, uh, are living and doing this on a daily basis. I am giving opinions as somebody who works with clients and also as a consumer. And day in and day out, I see such examples of terrible user experience and customer experience, not to mention customer service, that sometimes you look at something and say, it's not really that hard. Good customer experience or user experience design are not rocket science. I'm assuming this thing works and there is a deck up here. There is actually a deck up here. So, so why is CX important? Um, by the way, my fallback was I have a PowerPoint on my iPhone. I was going to use this as my talking points. And that's for your safety, actually, because I know how to make a short story long. And uh, we could be here all night. Um, so the, I should stand still because he's taking a picture of me. So just kidding. <laughs> so, so the idea is the reason I believe that customer experience is so very, very important today is in this day and age, everybody is trying to do really great things. Everybody's trying to put together digital transformation plans. They're trying to enter everybody else's business. They're trying to uh, create new and exciting products. But without a good user experience and a customer experience, these are rendered useless, in my opinion. And so what does that mean in reality? And one of the key things I've always found is that in the old days, it, you know, the products were always competing. There was a Toyota and a Honda, or a Mercedes and a BMW, etc. They all competed. McDonald's, Burger King. And everybody was competing with fairly similar things, either in the newer industries with new feature sets. You did a feature set, somebody either copied it. You put in a fast new chip, somebody got a faster one, etc. Or if you were in traditional industries, what you did was you competed on price or promotion, etc. Customer experience was never key until a few companies like Apple, I guess, was one of the first ones, in my opinion, that really made CX and UX key to what was to become their key success. And so in this day and age, even that is not enough because the laggards of yesterday have become fast followers. And that means that the problem is that there is not a single company that I have talked to or I have bought products off or gone to a website off where the CEO or somebody else is not talking about oh my God, we are so customer obsessed. We are completely focused on uh, the customer's experience, etc. They will say all the buzzwords or they will make all the sounds that make them feel that they will be perceived as customer experience caring people. But in reality, that does not really happen across the ecosystem of that enterprise. Now, obviously, you are all very good at what you do. So any of the negative comments I make are about the people who chose not to come to this conference. You're welcome, Mark. Uh, so, uh, so what is missing? I think, in, from my experience again, I haven't worked in CX as you do day in and day out, but from having worked in enterprises like Cisco and Microsoft and with clients in, uh, of these companies, I believe one of the things that is missing is executive sponsorship. Leaders at the very top need to be co committed and focused on user experience and customer experience as a key differentiating factor. Design thinking, everybody talks about it again. What does that mean? It will differ from company to company, but it has to come from the top so that somebody in the industry, such as yourselves, can actually get to do your best work that is impactful, not just for the product you're working on, but for something that affects the ecosystem of your entire company and its product offerings. A lot of people talk about, oh, we get customer insights, et cetera. But all of that done, is done in such silos that we don't really get the full effect of what you can do. So does that make it sound like there is no hope? Absolutely not. The best thing in the world I can say is, I can say a lot of best things in the world, but I'll stick to one. Great customer experience design and user experience design are not rocket science. In my humble opinion, it sometimes takes simple common sense, which is quite lacking in some of the things I have seen. Now, what does it take? I believe there are three key points, three key ways to make your work most effective in an organization. And I try to tell this to the CIO and CTO, chief marketing officer, et cetera, level people that I 
do consulting work with or customer success or enterprise strategy consulting with. My point to them has always been that without the leadership focus, without everybody at the top knowing that this is important, not just for the survival, but for the success of the company, it has to start from the top. One of the best advices I've ever given them is, make your CEO go and do a transaction on your own website. Try to find a product and do the, try to register and see how fast that organization puts money where it makes your life a little easier, makes your work a little more welcomed and appreciated. Second thing is the corporate culture. I think culture has been mentioned several times already. Culture can eat strategy for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or for a buffet, but the real fact is that most companies that are even focused on customer experience design for the outside, for the consumer, for the customer, actually miss out a very key fact. If you, I, I think I can use this word, if you give your internal employees a crappy user experience, it becomes part of the work psyche, it becomes part of your mood, it becomes part of most of your working personality. You get a shitty user experience at work, you will create user experiences for your customers. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can beep out one, two is harder. So, uh, but again, and I'm serious about that, and I say that even for my, my, my employers that I have worked at, that some of the times it becomes such a part of the culture, you tell a colleague, hey, this or that product, a piece of the uh, tool did not work for internal reporting. Oh, here's the workaround. When your internal processes become uh, driven by people knowing workarounds to internal problems, guess what happens? You start creating products and say, ah, working as designed because customers will figure out a way to go around that bad design. That's not really customer experience design, in my opinion. And then this is something you, some of the other people have talked about. The video is a good example of this. In my humble opinion, the closer you can get the user experience, the product design, the engineering teams, etc., to real users, and I think video is an absolutely magical, magical, magical solution for that, the better the user experience will be. And rather than having open-ended surveys, et cetera, have people sit down and do a literal demo of how they use the product. So are, is there anybody who does it great? Well, frankly, no one does it really great. In the old days, yes, there were some, as I mentioned, they were, that were really great at user experience and customer experience. But the, uh, they have been in decline, in my opinion. I won't name any company names. And the laggards have started getting better. But that is what I think is the biggest opportunity for us. In, in, uh, in an industry or in a marketplace or in an economy where almost any company can enter anybody else's business. Anybody can take your product idea and go to China and have it made cheaply and have it on Amazon in three days. The thing that will differentiate you from your competition, no matter what product you have, no matter what service industry you are in, no matter what you are selling or offering or trying to achieve in life, Without great customer experience, you will not get there. But if you do customer experience design right, if you do it with the right culture, with the right leadership focus, and if you do it knowing that that is going to drive your actual success, making people happy to use whatever you're offering, that is going to make not just simple things happen, it will give you a sustainable competitive advantage. Nothing else. Putting in an i9 chip in a laptop, Everybody else tomorrow selling a laptop will have an i9. You can go put in Linux, somebody will put in some other variant of Unix. Whatever it is that you're doing, sustainable competitive advantage will come from customer delight, from customers loving to use your product. And when you do that, you also reduce friction. If I was to say, I'm going to give you $1,000, do you want me to give you the $1,000? Or do you want me to say, hold on, let me go measure each bill first. Yep, seems the right dimension. Let me make sure the serial numbers are in order. Can I put all the order of the pictures in together so all the Ben Franklins face the same way? That's friction because you want my money. Do you want your customer's money faster or through seven extra steps? That is the question you need to ask your chief marketing officer, your chief product officer, and quite frankly, to your CEO. Without that, without their focus, without them giving you the right tools and understanding the value you provide, and then getting closer to the customer, Great customer experience will not happen, but if you put them together, I promise you, the sky is the limit. You will have sustainable competitive advantage. You will win the day. Thank you for having me.